Hello everyone and welcome back. This is the time of the year when students put together their application in order to apply to their master or PhD program. Me, as Director of Graduate Studies for Computer Science and Computer Engineering, I have the duty to review these applications and decide on their admission. So in this video, based on my experience, I want to provide you a guide in order to maximize the chances that you're going to be admitted by analyzing every individual component of an application and provide you some suggestions in order to improve it and also discuss some mistakes and how to avoid them. At the end of the video, I'm going to provide some action items that you can start doing right now in order to maximize the chances that you're going to be admitted when the time to apply actually comes. Before we start, I noticed that almost 80% of the people that watch these videos are not subscribed. I would really appreciate if you could subscribe to the channel and like the video because this will help significantly this content reaching more students. Thank you very much and let's start. The first thing that we look for are the transcripts and within the transcripts we look at several different things. The first thing that we look at is the major in which you graduated and if this major is in line with the major for which you are applying to graduate school. So for example if you're applying in computer science but your bachelor degree is in let's say architecture there is a high chance that you don't have the sufficient background in order to be successful in graduate school in computer science. Next we look at the quality of the school where you got your degree. Of course, many of our applicants are international, and so we use rankings in order to have an idea of what is the quality of that specific school. Next, we look for the GPA. So what is the average of the grades that you have taken across all your studies? And of course, we look for IGPAs. But additionally, we also look for the grades that you took in certain specific classes, and those are the core classes in your discipline. So for example, in computer science, I will look for algorithms, I will look for computer networking, I will look for discrete math, I will look for calculus, I will look for programming, etc. So I want to make sure you have a solid background in computer science with good grades that can make you successful in graduate school. The second component of the application are the test scores. So there are two types of test scores, the standardized tests, such as, for example, GRE, and then the language test. So tests such as GRE are mostly provided in order to have an idea of what is your level of critical thinking, of analytical thinking, etc. So this is specifically important for international applicants that may come from schools with which we are not specifically familiar, and so GRE can provide an additional information about your skills. However, many schools, including ours, have waived this requirement. However, it may still be a good idea to provide the results of your test if you have them in order to complete your application and give a better idea of your preparation for graduate school. The other type of tests are the language tests, and these are designed in order to evaluate your ability in reading, understanding, writing, and speaking in English. So those results are specifically important in order to, for example, getting a TA position, a teaching assistant position. And the reason is that as a TA, you're going to be required to interact with students, to grade their assignments, talk to the students. So it's very important that you have good English skills in order to perform these duties. Additionally, writing is one of the most important skills that you're going to develop during your graduate studies. So if you already start from a solid basis, it's going to be much more easy for you to be successful. And this is something that advisors like me are going to look for. The next component of the application is the resume. So this is really your opportunity to make you shine. And it's also our opportunity to evaluate how good you are at writing, organizing, summarizing, and explaining what you know best, which is yourself. So make sure it is very well organized and very well designed. The important elements that should appear in a resume are first off the education with the school you attended, the GPA that you got, if you have any honors or awards. Additionally, you can mention certain specific classes, such as the core classes that I mentioned before, and what grades you have got, so that you can actually show that you have a solid background in that specific discipline. Additionally, you can also mention some specific skills that you develop. For example, you may have some programming skills or have played around with machine learning, etc. Then you can mention some specific projects, and this could be projects that you have worked with in class, or also you have worked, for example, with some research experience that you have done. And what was your role in this project, and what was also the project overall objective? Additionally, you can add some publications if you have them, but 
honestly, since you are applying to graduate school, not necessarily we are expecting you to have some obligations. But it may happen that some students have started having some research experience early on, and so they have pub already publications by the time they apply. And finally, you can also conclude with some of your personal interests to show that you also have some interest outside of the pure professional profile. It may also be a good idea to provide some links to some repositories online, such as, for example, GitHub, that contains the project or examples of projects that you have done in order to show with concrete examples what you have done in your professional career. The next item in your application is going to be the personal statement. So in the personal statement, what we look for is, first off, you know how to write. Second, that you are very well motivated and you have more or less an idea of what you are interested in when you go into research in graduate school. And third, that also you know about us and what research we do. So what you should really mention in your personal statement is, first off, why you want to do graduate school and why you are interested in this specific program. Additionally, you can highlight some of the experience that you already had and how you want to use this experience in order to do research in the futures. Furthermore, you also need to show that you know us, who we are and what research we do. So, for example, mentioning some specific professors and some specific works of those professors that you have read and motivated you to apply to this specific program. One suggestion that I have here is to not use tools such as ChatGPT because they will result in a personal statement that maybe is well written, but it's very flat, it's very bland, it's very general, and it's not specific of your application, and it's not specific to the program where you are applying. So you can use these tools in order to have an idea of what is the structure of the personal statement, but then you need to significantly edit it in order to make it yours, and in order to make it specific for that program. The last item of your applications are going to be the recommendation letters. But remember that after this item, I'm going to give you some specific items that you can start doing now in order to be successful in your application. So watch this video until the end. Let's go back to the recommendation letters. So we need recommendation letters in order to gather an opinion about you, a professional opinion about you from people that have worked with you throughout the years. So it's important that you select people that have work with you, that know you well, and that can say specific things about your professional experience. So, for example, this could be professor with whom you have taken a class or professor with whom you have done some research with, and in general, that could be mentors and supervisors that you have throughout the years. One suggestion that I have here is to provide the letter writer a list of the activities that you have done together. This will help the letter writer writing a more specific letters for you. As you may understand, we write a high amount of recommendation letters and it's hard to remember what are the specific activities that we have done with each individual student. So, so this list will help the letter writer summarizing the most important activities that you have done together, making the letter more impactful. And finally, here we are at the action items that you can start taking now in order to be successful in your future application for graduate school. So from this video, it should be clear that many things you're going to mention in your graduate applications are already set and you cannot really change them. Things like the school you attended, the grades that you got, your GPA, etc., cannot be really changed. So my suggestion is to decide as soon as possible that you want to do graduate school and then work towards that specific goal. Select a good school for your undergraduate studies. Select the major that you want to go for graduate school as also the major of your bachelor degree. Additionally, try to get very good grades in core classes because those are those that matter the most when you're going to apply for graduate school. Additionally, it would be very beneficial if you have some research experience so that that research experience, then you can sell and use it in order to be successful in graduate school. And many professors are going to be very happy to see you having that research experience. And many times this research experience may already have led to a publication that will help you even further being admitted and being admitted even better schools for graduate studies. Additionally, try to build a network as soon as possible, because that network of professionals are going to be your letter writers that, again, will help the chances of being admitted in graduate school. So this video is over. Thank you very much for watching. Please remember to like this video and subscribe to the channel to help spread this content. Thank you very much and see you soon.